Welcome to the third video in my Facebook Marketing Made Easy video series. In the first video, as I'm sure you remember, we talked about the importance of finding the ideal clients for you to do their social Facebook marketing for. Then in the second video, I took you through five real-world case studies of five actual um, real-world businesses and ran them against our eight-point check sheet to discover which businesses should be on Facebook and which businesses you could work for, what type of business you could work for, and increase the turnover of that business, increase their profitability, and in doing that, earn yourself some very good wages. So, um, we, we finished off in the second video by looking at how you would engage your first few clients. And obviously the, the key thing is only to approach the very, very best uh, prospects because you don't want to be working for clients where it's gonna be a case of pushing the snowball up the hill. When you get the right clients, the snowball is pointing down the hill and it's easy, it's easy to make them more profit. So. In this third video, we're going to look at exactly how to do that. We're going to look at delivery. There are three very important things that you need to do for every client, and you need to be doing those things on a regular basis. I'm going to reveal what those things are, and I'm going to give you a bunch of practical tips and tricks, stuff that we have done, that we have seen done, that actually works, um, all of this stuff is on your checklist, on, on, your, on your cheat sheet as well, so use that. And let's go with delivery. Okay, so quickly we're just going to recap how Facebook engagement works and why engagement is so important. So you, you, you have to start with true likes. True likes is where your reach begins, right? Now the people that you get to like your page should be the real target audience. And ideally, they're going to be in a coherent market where their friends are also likely to be part of that target audience as well. Otherwise, it's a bit out in the cold. It's a bit kind of spread out, a bit like lighting a fire where, with uh, dozens of sticks, but all the sticks are spread out. It's never going to work. You're just going to um, waste all your matches, right? So uh, having a coherent market's a bit like that. You want a market where all the people who could be buying from you, tend to know each other. Okay, so likes can generate reach. That's where your reach begins. Then what you have to do is you have to give people reasons to engage. When they engage, you get engagement and that then reinforces reach. If you don't have engagement, then no matter how many people think they like your page or say they like your page, they aren't all going to be even seeing your content. So engagement is absolutely critical. Now let me give you a real world example of this. I talked in the previous video about Sweetopia, which was Sally's home business making these candy bouquets, gift bouquets. That accelerated really, really fast for the first few months. Then we stopped it. But the Facebook page is still there. Now let's see what happens. Because we... Um, we had a, an app running within Facebook that's called Fan of the Week. It was very easy to set up. You just say, yeah, install this app on this page. And what it does is it chooses one liker per week and says, congratulations, you're the Fan of the Week, right? That's it. Not much to it. What it does mean, however, is that this page was then generating posts every week, even while we were doing nothing with it. Now, have a look at this page. So this comes from the insights that you get within Facebook. When you own a page or you're the administrator, manager of a page, you can click on insights and they really have done a really good job of showing you an awful lot of relevant data. They, uh, This is quite a mature marketing platform now. So here's just a few things. We're in the overview tab of insights right now. And the things I want you to look at are firstly, the number of page likes. It's 1,381, okay? That's gone down a bit from the peak of about 1,400, okay? But there's over 1,300 people who still like Sweetopia. Now, 
Next thing I want you to look at is right down at the bottom of the page where the last fan of the week post was from December before we switched off the Facebook app and look at the reach on that. 1,381 people like this page. Three people only saw that post. Why? Why would only three people out of 1,300 see that post? Well, the answer is simple. Only three people have recently engaged with Sweetopia in any way. Uh, they've only recently engaged with their con with the Sweetopia's content, in other words. Okay? So, when you don't, when your followers don't engage with your stuff, then your stuff is going to stop appearing for those people. Okay? Only three people saw that. That's less than one in 400. Right, so uh, you can see how low the engagement is as well. So there's some proof there of why engagement is so important. So now, what are we going to do? What are the things that you have to do as a Facebook social marketing consultant for your clients? Well, as you might expect, there's a bit of a pattern in all of this. This stuff is relatively easy, relatively ordinary, straightforward. Okay, now. A lot of people in marketing can suffer from trying to be too clever about stuff. We see it all the time. Facebook is not really the time to get clever about stuff because what's Facebook full of? Ordinary people doing ordinary everyday things. So let's look at the stuff that you have to do in order to make your clients more successful every week, every month, and to make yourself ever more valuable. Number one, obviously, we need to keep reaching more people. And that means you, know, you need to start with building true page likes. You want more people liking your page every week, ideally every day. Now, when you get to a certain size, you will find that people will automatically start coming to your page and liking it. Okay, If you're following the rules, if you're following the the uh, instructions that I'm giving you, you will find that people just are naturally magnetized, drawn, attracted to your page. So number one, you've got to build true page likes. Um, number two, you need to build engagement. You've got to give people reasons to engage, right? So give them reasons to like you in the first place. And what that generally boils down to, guys, is something that tickles their self-interest. Right, well, we only want to do things where there's something in it for us. That's why we say always have that what's in it for me. Okay, give them a reason to like you in the first place, give them reasons to engage with you in the second, and then finally, and most importantly, give them reasons and opportunities to buy. Likes on their own, reach on its own, engagement on its own doesn't really mean all that much unless people are actually going to put their hands in their pockets, pay money to your clients which then generates profits, which then justifies your fees. So three things, and you have to be doing really all of these three things at least on a weekly basis. So when you are thinking about what am I going to post, what are you doing? Are you trying to build page likes? Are you trying to get engagement? Or are you giving people calls to action, the reasons and opportunities to buy? So in the rest of this video, what I'm going to do is break down each of these, the three legs of these stool um, for you. I'm going to give you a bunch of examples to how to build true page likes, another bunch of examples about building engagement, and then also the calls to action as well. And then you will have everything that you need on your little cheat sheet so that you can go out and really start making real money. So without any further ado, well, let's just cover a few little general principles, right? Remember this picture, burn this into your mind. Okay, now the, the headline on this ad, this is a print ad that has run continuously in print media, newspapers, magazines since 1960. Okay, there have been variations of the ad. They've tried different pictures, they've tried different headlines. Okay, they've been testing and measuring and split testing for over 50 years and this ad is still making money so what does this teach us number one do what works number two do it again and also feel free to borrow from what you see working elsewhere 
Facebook, Facebook is social, you know. How many of us only tell jokes that we have written ourselves? It doesn't happen, right? We share stuff. You hear something funny, you hear something interesting, you hear something that makes you angry or happy or sad, then you share it with other people. That's what chatting's about. That's what gossip's like, you know. This is what makes the world go round. So if there's one key to marketing, it's do what works. If it works, do it. If it works, do it again. Look around. Keep your eyes open. Be a student of human nature. Be a student of Facebook. Be a student of marketing. And remember that marketing is usually a a simple exercise where you're engaging with normal people and doing normal things and giving people really what they want. So, do what works. Do it again. And feel free to borrow from other places. Don't feel guilty about it. So let's start then with building true page likes. I'm going to give you my tips and techniques for building true page likes. Bottom line is, you've got to be giving people stuff they'll genuinely like. Okay, now if you're in a pushing the snowball uphill type of environment and you've taken on a client that really shouldn't be on Facebook and is going to struggle to build a following on Facebook, then this will be hard for you, right? If you've got a client that already has fans, that stands out in its market, there's no one else quite like it, and um, that you love, that you use as well, then it should actually be fairly straightforward to find things that people are going to like. And you're going to see loads and loads of examples of that in this video. Give them a reason to click like. Now we already saw one of those in our cover photo that we did for Asheville Auctions back in the last video. We said, you know, uh, like this page to be updated with the all the the bargains every week, for example, okay? And I, I mentioned to you that is a reason to like the page call to action. Okay, very, very simple. And remember, everything that you need, everything that you do needs to have W I I F M. It's not a radio station. It stands for what is it? What's in it for me? Okay, what's in it for me? Think about them. Think about what's going to make them happy. What's going to be in their self interests? Marketing isn't about you. It isn't about your client. It's about how can you stimulate people's selfish desires to feel good about themselves, to save money, to enjoy life. If and when you can stimulate your target market's self-interest, that is the way to get people to buy from you. And here's just one example. Uh, Like our page to get the best deals every day. Okay. So, specific tips then. Let's start with tip number one. Reaching out to relevant groups. This is a potential gold mine. I cannot stress it enough, right? This is the first thing that Sally started doing with um, with Dougie's Meats. So you, you can literally join dozens of groups with a few minutes work. So for Dougie's Meats, Sally actually joined dozens of local groups, which then allowed her to cross post deals and offers and comments to do with Dougie's Meats, right? But she did that as herself. So you need to keep your your own identity um, on Facebook um, separate, obviously, from from your clients because you've got you. Now, when you join groups, you'll be joining groups as you, not as your clients. And then this then lets you post the same thing quite often, over and over again on a bunch of different groups. Now, groups can have thousands of members, right? So here's what you'll do, and I'll I'll give you an example of this in a second. So you can start with doing a keyword search on Facebook, literally in the search bar at the top, which is actually quite powerful. Then if you click See More Results For, you may then get the option for um, clicking on Groups to see groups that include that keyword in their name. So if you want local groups to do with bargains, buying and selling, or some specific interest, just use the Facebook search bar. Now, obviously in this series, I'm trying to steer away a little bit from the 
kind of absolute hands-on practical stuff because Facebook changes so fast. Right, so I'm not going to be showing you exactly where to click to run promotions and stuff like that. But let's do a quick example of how you might find some Facebook groups that are related to a particular keyword that you want. Okay, so this is my Facebook page. Now, to get this to work, remember, you join groups as you, not as a client, okay? So I'm just going to click in the search box there and I'm going to do find groups named and you can see it's starting to give me suggestions down here okay so find groups named model okay or you can just do groups named model or members of groups named model groups named model that are joined by my friends Wow, there's uh, loads of options here. So I'll just click on groups name model. Okay, now here's a group for model railroading with four and a half thousand members. Model cars, 8,000 members. Don't know what that is. That's a uh, German one, I think. Model railroading, 300. So you can just scroll down here, literally. And if you're all about model railways, then you can just click join, 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 and go down. And Facebook will just keep feeding you, feeding you loads of results to do with groups that have the word model in it. So very, very simple. And that's a great way to reach dozens and dozens of, of groups, which could all have thousands of members each. So if I go onto here, now one word of warning about groups, okay? They're not all good. Some groups, although they may have thousands of members, are completely and utterly useless. I did a test a little while ago. I was trying to promote the Web Design from Scratch page on Facebook. So I thought, well, let me go. I'll do what Sally does, and I'll go and join loads of groups called Internet Marketing. And I found lots of groups called Internet Marketing. Now, this stuff, most of these groups are completely useless. In when you go to some of these groups, what you find is everybody is just trying to sell their latest get quick rich scheme. Um, and I've got no interest in, uh, in that whatsoever. So be careful what kind of groups you join because, and check, see if you can check them out first. I mean, closed groups, you can't, but don't bother posting in groups where everyone's shouting. You know, the analogy I like to use is like it's a, a farmyard that's full of cockerels and no hens. Everyone wants to do the deed to everyone else, but no one's interested. When everyone's selling, it's a, a pointless environment to be in. So there's a, a one quick way to get into groups. Of course, you can then filter it down to nearby groups, which is great as well. So here are some groups that uh, I think I may be a member of. So yeah, Facebook, a lot more powerful than you may think at first sight. So let's go back to the presentation. So moving on then with tips for getting page likes. Groups is, groups is one you can reach tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people fairly quickly. You just need to post something on there that's going to be genuinely interesting to those people. Okay, next tip. Adding a Facebook like button or box to your website. Now, I have to say this isn't for everybody. Right, this only applies if you already get plenty of visitors to your website and the visitors to your website are likely to be in the target market for the for the Facebook page as well. Now, in most situations, this won't be the case, but I have to mention this to you because it, it can help. So if your client has a website that's already getting traffic and you want a way to be able to keep in touch with those visitors to the website, getting them to like the Facebook page obviously makes sense. Now, I recommend the like box, um, which is particularly good for social reinforcement. So this is an example of it. To find this, just go onto Google and type in Facebook like box, and there's a, a developer's area at Facebook where you can get a little code that will immediately put this on your website, okay? So this is one that I've just made for Dougie's Meats says how many people like it and it shows pictures of your friends 
which friends like it. So I'm on there, and that's Kelsey, and that's my sister, and that's Emily, and that's Sally, and that's Dario. And, you know, I recognize these people. And if my friends like it, I'm a lot more likely to like it. So if the client has a website, if it's fairly popular, it's the same target market, think about putting this kind of uh, feature on there for them. Tip number three, one of my absolute favorites. You know, we've talked about people's self-interest. Never forget that it's all about them and it ain't about you, right? They're all thinking, what's in it for me? And anyone who is or has been a parent of a small child and knows the power of bribery. This is, this is fantastic, okay? So what do we do? We take a bag of meat that maybe costs us about 20 pounds, and so here is the Mighty Mix Grill Meat Pack. If we hit 3,000 likes by the weekend, then this could be yours. Like and share away, and the best comment to why you love Dougie's Meats wins. Okay, so we're giving away something worth about 20 pounds. And what are the results of this? Okay, we actually boosted this one for 10 pounds, and you can see, because it says see results here, that means that this is a boosted post. The view of this is actually from within Insights, which is why I've got all this extra information on the right-hand side. But we've had 335 shares of this post. 335 people of our followers have shared it, which then means that it has actually reached 21,000 people. Now, at this point, only say three and a half thousand people like Dougie's Meats. This has reached 21,000. And the reason it has is because of those shares. It's had 448 likes and 128 comments. Now that is, you know, lots of engagement, which means lots of other people are seeing it, which means lots of other people are being exposed to the, the, the client. And that then gives them an opportunity to click on Dougie's Meats and click, oh, this looks interesting, I'm gonna click like. Right, simple as that. People's self-interest, bribe them. If we hit 3,000 by the weekend, then someone's gonna win a bag of meat. All right, and 448 people liked it, 128 comments, 335 shares. Tip 3B, if it works, what do we do? We do it again. Bribe again. Competition time. If we reach 3,500 likes before Friday the 1st, or before Friday, one lucky winner will receive a Valentine's hamper with everything in to spoil your loved one this weekend. Selection of meat, chocolates, flowers, and sparkling wine. All right? Now, this here, this says boost post. So we didn't pay for this. The cost was zero for this. Out of you're still 3,500 people who like the page. Over 8,000 people saw this. Why did 8,000 people see it? Well, 317 of our own fans liked it. 36 of them commented on it. And over 100 of our fans shared this page. That's like 3%. That's good engagement for sharing. Okay, so 114 of them shared it, which means that we reached thousands more people, nearly 5,000 more people because of those shares. And some of those people shared it themselves, right? Because what are we doing? We are bribing people. We're offering something that they want, that they can get for free. And Facebook's great for that. Tip 3C, you guessed it. If it works, do it again and do it again. Now, this one's interesting. Weekly meat raffle starting this week if we get to 4,000 likes. And 167 people liked it and 11 people shared it. Those numbers are a lot lower than for the two previous posts. I think the reason why those numbers are a lot lower is because all it says is weekly meat raffle starting. There's no picture and there's no description of exactly what you're gonna get. If I go back to the previous page, look at this one, right? huge picture with all that meat and you can start to visualize yourself enjoying it you can start to visualize yourself cooking it or serving it up and how nice that would be with this one it's not quite the same but at least it's relevant to valentine's day and it makes the post physically a lot bigger on the page so it's going to be bigger it's got more chance to grab your attention when you get a little one like this 
it's just one liner it's simply less noticeable than the other ones and um, let's make a little point now about the difference between Facebook ads and promoted posts okay let me flick back to Facebook so I've gone to my Facebook page and here on the right hand side you can see ads that people have put on there they have a small thumbnail image they have a short title usually a link and that will go through to a Facebook page or somebody else's website now these things could be uh, promoted posts and in fact this one is it's sponsored right so this is for kind of an extreme obstacle course and it says that one of my friends likes this which is making it relevant to me right a bit of social proof now they have paid to promote this now what we tend to find is this works and generally this works but they work in different ways what you'll find is a lot more people will see this a lot more people will act on it they'll click on it they'll like it they'll share it all that kind of stuff it tends to cost you a little bit more than ads on the side ads these ads on the side are a lot easier to ignore but if you're counting the cost per click the cost per action of people that, that click on these these tend to be cheaper but less busy these tend to cost you a little bit more per click but you get a lot more activity okay so that's the difference so let's move on to our next tip for getting these genuine authentic page likes tip number four this is a beauty uh, like and share to win now there's these co uh, competitions are all over Facebook if you keep your eye out here are just a few little examples um, like this for a chance to win this like and share to win up to three thousand dollars like and share and win this kind of stool box whatever it is I don't know what it is but what they're telling you here is here is exactly what you need to do you have to like us you have to like them you have to share the image and then cross your fingers this is something that we have used and we've used it to good effect here's an example yabba dabba do a little competition for you this beautiful spring morning share and like this post to win a pair of prime scotch ribeyes on the bone which were absolutely gorgeous by the way think of that on your plate this weekend now that's clever because what you're doing is what Sally's doing in, the, in this case is getting people to visualize having won this competition you're visualizing that meat cooked on your plate on the plate that you serve up and um, that is a great way to get people to engage with whatever content you know if you can get them to picture in their mind's eye how it will feel to win this then they're a lot more likely to take part now you can see at the bottom here it says boost post because we didn't boost this post right it cost us zero however 10,000 people saw it now doggies meats are still at at this point got less than 4,000 likes but 10,000 people have seen it why have 10,000 people seen it because it's been shared by 182 of our followers 153 of them liked it which could mean their friends see it 48 people commented on it which could mean their friends see it 182 of them shared it to all of their friends which means that their friends will definitely see it and from that we got more likes more comments more shares we didn't spend one penny on this okay what we did was we took maybe 15 pounds worth of meat ran a competition and you know it just hardwired straight to people's self-interest you look at that picture it's not even a great picture right? it's got the black strips top and bottom doesn't matter this is Facebook this is ordinary this is every day this is pedestrian stuff okay people go mad for free stuff so give it to them bribe them whatever next tip for getting page likes so I've saved this one till the end because I want you to try the free stuff like groups and competitions before you start putting your hand in your pocket and paying um, however if you you know when you get a new client I do recommend that you in, you know take a good portion of your first fee and start buying likes because that will just you know help you get off the ground help get the ball rolling so promoting your page for likes Facebook make it really really easy for you 
Here's a screen grab from Facebook. I'm logged in as the admin for this site. And you can see there's a thing up there that says build audience and promote page. So that's one thing I can do. If you look at the lower down to the left here also, it says get more likes. Create an ad to get more people to like your page. So, you know, Facebook know there's money in this and they make it really, really easy to do it. I don't need to show you the mechanics of that. It could change in a few weeks anyway. So bottom line, um, Facebook will suggest to people pages that they may like. Now, if you click on that, if you click promote page, you'll you could get something like this, which says, well, who do you want to promote this page to? I've just used a completely random example, Save the Pixel Facebook page, which is pretty much redundant, 228 likes. And you can put in the countries or literally towns or neighborhoods um, or states that you want to you the people to where, where you want the people to to see your promotion and you can say what are their interests so yeah this this one has just literally grabbed some keywords from the page that I'm trying to promote but if you want to promote something to people who are interested in snowboarding then you can put snowboarding in there you can put an age range in there obviously starting at is it 13 or 14 at the uh, the the bottom end you can say whether you want men and women or everyone to see it and give it a daily budget. Clever Facebook saying a daily budget, $5, $10, $15, $20 every day. They'll be getting that money from your account. Okay. Now, interestingly, Facebook has been quite conservative here. They're saying with a $10 daily budget, they estimate you'll get another 11 to 43 likes per day in this instance. So what that's saying is you'll get between maybe like one and five likes per dollar that you spend. We have found that it's actually a lot better than that in practice. Um, my sister runs a Facebook page called Busy Mums, which is doing well. That page got 176 new page likes recently for a spend of under $13. That works out at seven cents per new page like. Okay, this is something that I would recommend that you do, but only if you are promoting it to a specific audience, right? There are people out there who get paid to click like, right? There are sites out there which will sell you a thousand or ten thousand Facebook likes, and what that means is that you go onto a list, and there's people all over the world, mainly in developing countries, who are paid like a dollar per thousand like buttons that they click. Now, they will also then click uh, genuine like buttons that are not um, on the list of things to buy. They'll just click like to whatever to make it more difficult for Facebook to spot who they are. If Facebook could see, well, these people only like pages that get huge amounts of likes in no time and looks artificial, they may then cancel those accounts or ignore those accounts. So it's getting maybe a little bit more advanced than we need to get. But um, the point is, if you want to promote something to people in a specific geographic area, make sure you put that on here. And it can work very, very well. Okay, more tips for getting page likes. Here's, I mean, this is the final one, but bottom line, put out good promotions and content, right? If you put out good stuff that people are going to be interested in, then they're going to be interested in it. They're going to share it. They're going to engage with it. Their friends are going to see it. Their friends will click on the source. Oh, this came from Dougie's Meats. This came from Busy Mums. This came from Sweetopia. And if they like what they see, you've got a nice cover photo there. It's quite obvious what you do. And they see other good content. They'll go, oh, I like this page. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click like. Really as simple as that. So whenever your followers engage, as I've said, it means their friends could see it on their news feeds. And always be thinking to yourself, how can I make this shareable? Yeah, I mean, one thing that you can do is always add a CTA, a call to action. Please share this with your friends, right? If you don't ask, you won't get. This is simple, straightforward stuff. And quite often you'll find that people do what you tell them to do. So let's move on to the second section. We've talked about building genuine page likes. They've given you a bunch of things to, to get you going. Let's talk about building engagement. 
Now you've seen a few examples of this already. So here are a few uh, more, let's just break it down a bit. Obviously people can engage with your content in many ways and all those ways are positive. They can like a post, they can comment on a post which is better than a like, they can share a post which is better for you because it means all their friends and family get to see it. Or they can also like a post comment which is you know, less valuable, but all this stuff is good, right? All engagement is good. So the bottom line, of course, is again, post stuff that's good, post interesting content. Let's uh, break it down into some examples then of interesting content. Questions and polls, right? Questions and polls, beautiful things, right? Here's an example. I'll give you a couple of examples from Dougie's Meats. Uh, it says, okay, this is a good one. What recipe do you use for Yorkshire puddings? I've moved house and my oven isn't the same and I can't get them to rise as well as they did, right? We didn't boost that, it cost nothing. It got 27 comments. Why? Because it's about recipes. People, you know, that's part of the Facebook mode. People like to show off what they know. They like to impress other people and they like to help others as well. So, you know, if you post a problem on there and ask people for their solutions, you'll get comments. Out of 2,000 people, 27 comments, so that's over 1% of the people who saw this commented on it, right? Cost us zero. Here's another one. Would all of our Facebook likers please comment where you live so that we can organize the locations of new vans, please? That was boosted, but only for the cost of five pounds, that's eight dollars, okay? That one was seen by over 11,000 people and he got 356 comments. And those comments actually constitute some really useful business intelligence. Because what we did was we actually sat there and uh, went through all of those comments and collated where the people who wanted to buy meat from Dougie's Meats live. So that we could then spot locations where our vans aren't currently going and we could send the vans there. And it cost us five pounds, eight dollars. It's amazing. Here's another one. This is more playful, right? But three word Wednesday. Now this is something that that they do on a um, a radio show on Radio Two, which is the biggest radio station in the UK. And they have three word Wednesdays, and then people then text in a description of their day using only three words, right? So we just lifted it, right? Remember those basic principles, do what works, do it again, and don't be afraid to borrow, don't be too proud to borrow from what you see work, working elsewhere, right? People know Three Word Wednesday, if you listen to radio too. Describe Dougie's tomato sausage, best answer wins a bag full. If you don't listen, you have to give the best answer in three words, okay? It says boost post there, which means we didn't post it. It cost us zero, we got 85 comments from fewer than 3,000 people who saw it. That is a good rate of engagement. Remember, those 85 people now are known as Hot Dougie's likers, so, which means that they'll be seeing our content every time. Tip number two for getting engagement, like and share this post to win. We already talked about like and share a page to win. Now, whenever you do one of these, there's gonna be people that get it wrong. Okay, don't worry about that. It doesn't matter. Any engagement is good engagement. So here's an example. This is one that Sally did for Dougie's Meats. Who wants to lose weight this year? Let's kickstart our first competition with a Slimmer's World hamper. And this starts to describe what's in it. You can't even see, without clicking see more, what you have to do for the competition. But check this out. 132 comments, 380 likes, 489 shares. That's crazy. In total, 533 shares, right? It says see results there, but they actually, we didn't actually spend any money on this post. It was seen by 26,000 people. We got a load of comments, right? And, you know, it cost zero. So like and share this post. It's simple. It's obvious. You've seen it before. Forget about that stuff. It works. Do it. Okay, here's a fantastic example. This one's just absolutely genius. And this is <laughs> really one of the turning points for Sally's career as a Facebook marketing consultant, okay? We're doing Sweetopia. It's January 2013. It's a really 
quite a cold winter and we had an enormous dump of snow. So what happens when the snow falls, okay, nobody is really ordering um, products for candy bouquets to be delivered. Nobody's out there driving to deliver them. All the kids are at home because the schools are shut. So Sally's at the computer thinking, what should we do? So what she did was she put on a post on Facebook. Now, unfortunately, I can't get back to the original post. It was too long ago, over a year ago. But what she said was, we're going to have a snowman competition. It's a snow day. Let's celebrate the snow, right? This is topical. This is relevant. This is tying into what people are thinking. When the snow falls like that around here, everyone's thinking snow. That's all they're thinking about. And it's much the same in other places. Okay, so she did a snowman competition. And what she said was, you need to you know, build a snowman with your kid, take a photo of it and post it on our page. The one with the most likes um, in 24 hours or something will win an enormous candy bouquet. Now, that candy bouquet cost us less than £10, probably less than $10 to make. And this is just one of the examples. Now, this is Ben. Now, he didn't win. But look, this particular post got 13 comments and 43 likes. That means that people actually put on, you would put on there and they would then contact their friends and say, and sometimes tag their friends in a post and say, please like this because I'm going to win something. So their friends come along, they click like, they may like Tweetopia, doesn't matter, it's all engagement, it's all getting people involved, getting them clicking and liking and sharing and commenting and it all works. This is the result of that particular promotion, this little competition that Sally did. Before that point, you can see it was bobbing along on just under 400 page likes, okay? In the space of well, one day it jumped by 90. So it went from about 400, um, about 450 up to about 550 in just one day. And then you can see what happened after that point is the acceleration carried on. It gave the page actually some momentum because people were engaging. So, you know, when people are active, a page can build momentum. When people are inactive or disinterested, a page will go into entropy and it will its energy will just dissipate and and it will lose attention next tip for getting engagement challenging people we've talked about asking them questions asking them for advice right challenging them is is a great one so things like competitions quizzes maths problems everyone loves that everyone loves to be tested it's an innate human nature but look at this one this is uh quite a famous Facebook phenomenon really. Hi world, we want a puppy. Our dad said we could get one if we get one million likes. So like this. And then in small writing down there, he doesn't think we can do it. Okay. How many likes did they get? 1.69 million likes for that picture. That's all. Right. 39,000 comments and it was shared by over 136,000 people. Right, these girls have now got a Facebook page called Two Girls and a Puppy and pretty much anything that they post on there gets seen by tens, hundreds of thousands of people. Right. So could this work for you? Yes, it absolutely could. Right. You don't have to be original. You don't have to be madly creative to get stuff to work on Facebook. Here's another example. I don't even know what this is. Which Gilmore Girls guy is your soulmate? Right? And look how many people have engaged with this. 35 people have shared it. And 110 people have already commented on it. Right? I don't even know what this stuff's about. But, and, and it's got 184 likes as well. So... You know, this page, this, okay, it's a BuzzFeed quiz it came from. Um, that doesn't have necessarily have to have anything to do with what your page is about as such. But, you know, if it's relevant so much, the better. But snowmen and candy bouquets are, are not really related. But it helped us to reach our market. And we reached a lot of local people on that day. So, you know, challenge people. Which of these is your favorite and why? You know, 
Who's the most beautiful? Who's the most handsome? Whatever it is. Here's tip number four for getting people to engage. The tag friends call to action. We like this one, if you can find a reason to do it. Okay, here's an example, again from Dougie's Meats. Who would use a van in Whitwell? Tag in your friends. Now, tagging a friend is, I would guess, a another type of engagement that's similar to sharing. But it doesn't go on your wall, it goes to a specific person. So, who would use a van in Whitwell? Please tag people who would do it, right? Uh, saying, please tell us about individuals who would do it. So... Look, the first two people have commented have tagged already four people by name, which means that this post will appear on their newsfeed, on their timeline. Okay, so if you can find a reason to get people to tag people, we, we boosted this one for £20. Okay, it says please tag any bowls over people. We really, really want this to work. Okay, like and share one lucky person will win a bag of sausage and bacon. Blah, blah, blah. 20,000 people saw that post. It got overall 157 shares and 70 comments, 195 likes, right? We boosted it for a cost of 20 pounds. But that's 20 pounds, that's one pound per thousand people who saw it. Now, there's no way that you can get that kind of exposure from Google AdWords or banner ads or pretty much anything else. Okay, Facebook right now, guys, is a, a happy hunting ground for the right clients okay so this is just one more reason why i'm saying get in there get in there quick next tip for getting engagement controversy and gossip okay this is another area it's obvious it's ordinary it's commonplace ordinary people doing ordinary things never be afraid to stoop to gossip okay if in doubt, visit your local news agent and just look at all the the magazines on view on you know any kind of shelf display and see how many of those are nothing more than dirty old gossip. Right? There's loads and loads and loads and people keep bringing out new titles. It seems like there is an insatiable supply, uh, sorry, demand for gossip. Right? Gossip works. Um, it's not something we've done a lot of, but here's here's one example. There was a little bit of controversy that went off. Um, Dougie's Meats started at a new pitch at a pub, and there was a, a shop up the road that was a, like a delicatessen. They didn't really sell raw meat. They were a smokehouse, sold this stuff. They complained about Dougie's standing, you know, 200 yards or something from their shop, and then... The following week, when we went back, suddenly environmental health inspectors turned up. Okay, now so this is what this um, this post is saying: whoever it was that complained us about us to the castle arms decided to have another pop at us today with the environmental health. Everything was perfectly above board. Apparently, they had a complaint about us giving free bacon butties away for tasters. Thank you, people of Bolsover, for supporting us whilst this happened, and see you next week. Now. Cost zero, right? We didn't boost it. It was seen by 4,800 people. Now, look up at the top here. This is the, the screenshot from the summary. Pretty much all of our fans saw that, right? 2,600. It was also seen by 2,200 non-fans. So people who didn't already, who didn't already like Dougie's Meats. 2,200 of them saw that. Right? Why? Because it gives you something that's relevant, that's local, and so it's, it's got something to do with you and your area and the stuff you care about, and that's, that's the key. It's emotions. You want to get people fired up about something, about some kind of issue. Gossip works. Here's the next tip. When you get a good post, this might seem counterintuitive, when you get a good post, pay to boost it, right? So when you find something that you know is striking a chord, you know it's popular with people because it's getting comments, it's getting shares, it's getting engagement, right? What you've got there is you've got, you know, a snowball that's got some momentum. So use it, right? 
don't pay to promote content that people don't like. Pay to promote content that people already like to a wider audience because that way you will, you're more likely to get more likes and more engagement for your money. So this is an example, this springtime one. Competition time, it's officially spring tomorrow, so they're giving away a, a, a lean meat pack. We don't think that picture was particularly good. Your body needs a little love. It didn't really seem relevant to our target market, but it got 50 shares. 6,800 people saw that post, okay? And what did we spend? £4.97, right? That's about $8. 6,800 people saw it. And here, again, you can see that Facebook's saying, oh, would you like to boost it again? They make it so easy for you to hand over their money, which is why Facebook's uh, share price is going up in the way that it is. So, another one, tips for getting engagement, humor, right? We, we've already said that funny stuff works on Facebook, so use it if you can. Here's a joke that uh, Sally came across and she thought, well, in fact, no, um, you can go onto Google and you can say jokes about meat or jokes about butchers, right? Jokes about whatever it is, find jokes, post them on bloody Facebook, okay? That's what we did. So, just being offered eight legs of venison for 50 pounds, does anyone else think it's too dear, right? I think that's quite a good pun. Sally managed to find a picture of a deer standing behind another deer, which makes it look like it's got eight legs. Look at this, 64 likes, 11 comments on that, right? How long did it take? Five minutes, right? Good way to get engagement, make people laugh. People like to laugh and people like to share stuff that's funny. Something else that people like to engage with, nostalgia. We've been working with a client called Skater Trainer. They have 10,000, over 10,000 page likes. Now, check out this promotion that they ran. Throwback Thursday, okay? You see what they're doing? They're tying it into the day. They're tying it into what is relevant right now, okay? So just saying three-word Wednesday or throwback Thursday or it's a snow day, right? For some reason, it just helps it to, to ease your message into people's minds. Which of these skateboard decks is your favorite of the bunch? Now, these are old classic... 80s shaped skateboards but people who were skaters in the 80s will go mad for this stuff and they have so look at this 45,500 people have liked it this post was not boosted okay 45,000 people liked it they only have 10,000 likers uh, 45,000 people saw it 792 likes 190 comments and 190 shares in total 209 shares that is mad and they didn't even pay for it. It's just about thinking what will people be chomping at the bit to comment on or to share, right? Nostalgia is a great one and that again is on your cheat sheet. Just look at those numbers. So that's uh, the end of the second section. So we've looked at ways of getting genuine page likes and we've looked at a number of ways to boost engagement on your content. Now let's move on to reasons to buy. This is actually a shorter section because it's pretty straightforward. Selling is selling. Telling people about what they can buy, when they can buy it, and why they should buy it. Pretty simple. Let's run down the list. All of this is on your cheat sheet, remember. Okay, so reach and engagement actually mean nothing unless they lead to action. And our preferred kind of action is people putting their hands in their pockets, taking out some money and buying stuff with it. So, all of your Facebook activity should combine actions. As we said, these are the legs of your stool, the three-legged stool. You want to increase um, reach through page likes. You want to generate engagement, which uh, amplifies your reach. And then finally, you've got to give people these reasons and opportunities to buy what we call calls to action. So tip number one, simple reminders. Just say, this is where we are. This is when we're open. This is what stock we've got in. Now, a great thing about Dougie's Meat is they've got different meat all the time. And their vans are at different locations every day. Okay, so that gives us an excuse and a reason to remind our followers every day where the vans are, when they're going to be there, and what they've got in. You know, so if, if we get a load of um, fillet the beef fillets, then we'll say, we've just got a load of great beef fillets. Um, hurry, 
get them now. You know, they'll be gone in a couple of days. You know, these are amazing prices, amazing quality. Come and get it. Okay, come and get it is pretty much what we're talking about. Call to action. Come and get it. How about what's new? Right? What's different? What's new? New products that come in, new prices, new stuff. So always be asking yourself on a daily, weekly basis for each of your clients, well, what's new? What could constitute news? What gives me a reason or an excuse to tell your Facebook followers and to give them a reason to come down with their wallet? Okay. Um, how about what's timely? Are there events coming up? Is Valentine's Day coming up? Is end of school coming up? It's Christmas, you know? Or have you got an anniversary? Is, you know, summer holidays are looming. You want to lose some weight, okay? How about last few remaining? Urgency. Say, we've only got a few of these left. You've got to get down in the next 24 hours to buy them. Okay, so another example of timeliness. And aside from that, just tempting people. Give people a reason to buy when they're not thinking that they're ready to buy. So offers and promotions and discounts, okay? We've got this thing in, they've got to go, everything must go. And that may just persuade somebody to take the trip down and to buy. So now this could almost have been a ninth point on our checklist for ideal clients. It's much easier to promote a business when their stock, their offers or their locations change regularly, All right? Much easier to promote a business when they're what they sell, right? The offers that they have or their locations change regularly. Now, Dougie's Meat is perfect for that because there's always something new. We're always adding new pitches. These guys keep buying new lorries for goodness sake, okay? With all the money that they're making. So um, that gives us a, a great excuse every single day to go onto Facebook and say, get yourself down to these locations. This is where we are. This is what we've got. Here's just some very simple examples, all from Dougie's Meats. Um, all five vans out tomorrow. Staveley, Langold, Barnsley Lane, Drumfield, Noel Whittington. How's that for you? Right? Seen by a thousand people. We didn't pay for it. Feed your family for 30 pounds. Wow, all this meat for such a great price. Amounts may vary according to weight. Dum 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 dum. That's your 30 pound meat pack. That is an actual 30 pound meat pack on our dining room table when we unpacked it. Okay? 2,600 people saw it. It got 16 comments and about 20 likes, right? We didn't pay for that. Third one, we listened to our customers and this week's customer request meet is oxtails on the vans tomorrow. Okay, so what's that? That's a kind of, you know, a timely stock that's just in now. And on vans tomorrow, people are thinking, oh, I need to get down there tomorrow. Okay, got seven likes or so, eight comments, right? Didn't pay a penny for it. And that's really as simple as it is, guys. Just remind people what's on offer and give them reasons why they might think about buying some of it now. So um, the, the fourth thing that you may need to do, and hopefully you won't need to do this, is to prove your results to clients. But I thought it was something that's uh, worth mentioning. So hopefully your clients will notice a clear lift in their business from your Facebook marketing. Dougies know it. Dougies know that their, their takings have doubled and the number of people who literally walk up to their vans and say, hi, I saw you on Facebook. I thought I'd come down and try you, right? Leaves them in no doubt whatsoever of how well Facebook is working for them. However, um, you may need a way to prove to your clients how much benefit they're getting if it's not immediately obvious. So here's just a few thoughts. Number one, you could survey the customers. So you could say to people who come in the shop, Ashfield Auctions, for example, have got a registration form for their auctions and it ha it's, has a, a section on, how did you hear about us? Was it Facebook, word of mouth, whatever? Okay, so just surveying the customers, which could be informal. It, you, you could you know, go down and spend a couple of hours at your client's premises and when everyone comes in, you can say, hi, you know, welcome, how did you hear about us? And uh, you'll get then a feel for how many people found out about you on Facebook. You could provide a special offer or a voucher that's only promoted via Facebook, okay? So one thing that we've talked about in the past is giving people a special thing to say or a special thing to request. And if you do that, you'll get a free pack of bacon, 
or sausage or whatever in with your order, which then gets people to reinforce to the customer when they place their order, I found you on Facebook, I found you on Facebook. Okay, that may work. Another one is you could actually accept orders on Facebook itself. Um, that's something that we did with Dougie's before Christmas. Uh, we don't do it now. But to let people actually send in their orders for delivery and then you say to the client, look at all these orders I've got. Go and fulfill them. Think how much money that's worth. And taking that to another level, again, is to sell direct via Facebook. There are at least 20 or 30 free store apps that you can add to your Facebook page. Right? We've tested quite a few of them. Um, it's not something I'm going to go into right now because this stuff is going to change all the time. But it's actually very easy to set up a little e-commerce store on your Facebook page, on a tab on your Facebook page. So you can literally take orders direct from Facebook in the Facebook environment, then your client knows it, if it's something obviously that's applicable to you know remote ordering um, then your client knows exactly how much money that your Facebook page is literally taking and that's you know you can't get much more direct than that so hopefully you won't need to use these techniques but there's some ideas for you so let's just sum up what we've covered in this whole series some businesses can multiply their profits cheaply and easily using Facebook but most can't right some businesses can do incredibly well the majority will not use my checklist to identify the ideal target businesses and then offer to manage their Facebook pages as a consultant to them right get them to pay you to do it don't do anything for free to start with Obviously, the greater the value you can deliver, the higher fees you can justify. So only take on the very best prospects. Only take on those businesses. And, you know, like in our case, we really only have one major client at the moment because we only want one major client at the moment. It's a lot easier to do Dougie's Meats than it would be to do half a dozen other local businesses. Even if they're paying the same amount together, Dougie's Meats is easy to do because it's a natural fit for Facebook. So that's what you need. If there's one um, imperative that you want to take away from all of this is go out there, find yourself a Dougie's Meats or an approved foods or anything that just ticks all the boxes on that checklist. Then all you need to do is remember to you know, do the three legs of the stool. Build reach, which is page likes. Build engagement. Give your customers reasons and opportunities to buy, and that's it. Right? That is that is everything that we have learned about growing businesses and making money as a Facebook social media marketing consultant. I hope that I've given you inspiration, lots of ideas, but more importantly, the practical steps, the tips and the tricks that you can now apply tomorrow. Go out there, find your own customers, get hired by them, start earning real money with you know nothing more than your computer or your phone, your Facebook page, and um, a healthy dose of common sense. So that's the end of the third video. I'm going to leave the door open to doing some follow-up videos to this. If I do, you will get them. If you think that there's anything that uh, we should have covered in this course that we haven't covered, please feel free to email me, ben at benthunt.com, and I will certainly consider that. You can tell, I hope, that I really, really believe in this medium for the right business. And it's not for everybody, obviously, but then nothing is, right? Um, and I you know, honestly, genuinely wish you all the best. I wish you equal success as a Facebook marketing consultant and um, good luck with everything.